right, welcome to St. John's, Arizona, and the first home football game of the stadium. Actually, the first game of the stadium. Now for the coin toss, this is Chuck Copeland is our referee. John's won the toss and they're going to announce it to defer to the second half. And they will go to the fans of the scoreboard, kicking the field goal is good. Kick off. Okay, I was trying to play Red Red Kingdom. Which one? And as we go to the national anthem, All right, welcome back. We're going to get some uh, information back that the our audio is low. So, Rusty Quinn, let me know if you can hear me now. That'd be great. Oh, thank you, Quinn. All right. St. John's getting ready for the first kickoff of the 2022 high school football season here in St. John's as the home team, St. John's Redskins, gets ready to play their very first football game of the year. Last week they did not have a game for zero week, and Blue Ridge had a game at home where they played the Payson Longhorns and lost a tough one, 17-10. to 10. This should be a great ball game as we have two uh, historically storied programs here teeing off. St. John's has dominated the 2A programs for a very long time, having won quite a few state championships. I have a list of them here as soon as I can get to that paperwork and see, as well as Blue Ridge have dominated the 3A. They have the, the two coaches for both programs. Paul Morrow was the most winning coach in the state of Arizona, and then last year Coach Mike Morgan was able to overtake him. So two programs that have the number one and number two historical winning as coaches in the state of Arizona as they have new coaches coming in. John Richardson coaching for the St. John's Redskins. He, first year as a head coach. And then we have Jeremy Hathcock for Blue Ridge, who's been a coach for quite a few years. Uh, last year, I believe, was his first year back up in St. John or in Blue Ridge and where they barely missed the playoffs but he 
led a great Desert Ridge program in the Valley for quite a few years and a star player for Blue Ridge and John Richardson, a ex-great player for the Redskins. So Blue Ridge starts off shotgun formation. Two receivers to our right, handoff up the middle. Gets hit after about five yards and is able to go about eight, nine yards. Great run for Blue Ridge on their, their first play. And that's number 32, Franco Harris. Makes, makes a guy like me feel, feel good as an ex-Steeler fan, Mr. Franco Harris. And we have lists of players and information about all the players out there. So we'll be going through them, trying to talk about them and make this broadcast about them. This is Paul Hancock, who does it solo, a little bubble screen off to the left, and he's able to gain about 11 yards. So first down, and that is to Mr. Simmons, who's a junior. And his dad and brother are over here also broadcasting on Sports Zone to watch their their son and brother play. So another shotgun snap, handoff to the left to number 15. And there's a flag on the play, which that's in the area of a, of a holding penalty. Number 15 looks like Hunter Kraus. We'll go to Mr. Copeland. Who, oh, we have a personal foul face mask against St. John's. That will add 15 to the end of that run. So, second first down for Blue Ridge. Puts them at about the 43-yard line with 10 and a half to go. Talking to Mr. Hathcock before the game, Coach Hathcock before the game. And we have a little flinch over here on the right side, but no calls made on that. Shotgun snap, handoff. A little bit to the right, gets met at about the line of scrimmage and driven back. So it looks like they might credit him with about a yard. And that was number two. Jace Barton. So second and second and nine. Blue Ridge kind of pushing the tempo a little bit here. And hurrying to the line, but allowing the offensive coach to take a look at what the defense is doing. But talking to Coach Hathcock, and uh, after last night's game where the St. John's Redskin JV team was able to come away victorious 19-6, with four defensive scores, and it was, we're laughing and talking about that. And when's the last time you've seen a game where there's only defensive scores? Uh, Blue Ridge started off the scoring with a scoop and score on a fumble, and then St. John's had three picks for touchdowns and ended up winning the ball game, 19 to six. So third and nine. Trips to the right, bad snap, quarterback goes down and just covers the ball. So big loss, takes it back to about the 49 of Blue Ridge. Bring in fourth and a lot. Fourth and Salau, I would say. So St. John's gave up quite a, a little bit of yards that first possession, and then they are able to hold. Interesting. And they had to start off with six in the back, rushes them up to the to the line of scrimmage, and gets the punt off, and ball's covered up at just about the 21-yard line. So first and 10 for the St. John's Redskins, their first possession of this 2022 season and the John Richardson era. And we'll see what... Offense they come out with. Looks like number seven.
Looks like Asher. Rape is taking the snap. They run off tackle to number four, JT Richardson. JT Richardson is the leading rusher returning from last year. Gets swarmed, maybe gains a yard. Second and nine. Raven in. up under center. Two back set. Redskins set. Fakes the handoff. Trying to get the corner. Two guys to beat. He gets taken out at about the 20-yard line. So let's see. Oh, and he's giving credit to the 21. So probably a loss of one, third and 10. So third and ten, Redskins back in the huddle. Shotgun formation. Two back set. That's number twelve goes in motion. Quick pitch out to twelve, trying to get the edge. Loses his footing, and loses about four yards. So. To, Fourth and 14. So Redskins back in punt formation. Good snap. Rush is on. Gets line drive punt out. Gets to the 45 of Blue Ridge. Blue Ridge makes a man miss. He's able to cut up the right side. And a big hit there by 16 on 63. And opens it up and he gets inside the 10 yard line. So no penalties on that play. Even with that big hit. And St. John's is on defense with Blue Ridge. At about the nine yard line, first and goal. Great run back. Seven minutes to go. Blue Ridge comes up to the line of scrimmage. Dog information trips left. Two in the backfield. Kind of spread the defense out a little bit. Handoff up to Harris in the middle. And it looks like he is dropped for uh, about a yard loss. So good stop by the Redskins. The defensive line able to get penetration and get the stop on Harris. Blue Ridge comes up to the line. So false start on the play. Or might have been an illegal formation. Most likely illegal formation because there was no dead ball penalty thrown up. So illegal formation on enough men on the line of scrimmage, or too many men in the backfield actually. Brings it back five yards. First and goal from the 14-yard line. Trips left. Hand off to Harris. Met in the backfield. So they're going backwards. Looks like maybe a two-yard loss there. Second and 16. So, as a Blue Ridge fan, you got Franco Harris sitting back there, and then it looks like we have Troy Palomalo out here on the slot. 
So Blue Ridge is trying to become Steeler Nation. Rush up the middle. Back shoulder fade to the receiver. And it looks like he is... I don't happen to see a signal, but... Oh, Mr. Referee gives us a signal. No signal from our wing. Official, so 6 nothing for the Blue Ridge. And setting up for the PAT, and looks like we have a delay of game. <laughs> Giving them five more yards added to this point after try. Snap, the hold, the kick. And looks like it splits the uprights. Oh no. Looks like it missed it somehow, some way. So six nothing for the Blue Ridge Yellow Jackets as we go to quick one minute timeout. And just a reminder, the Legacy Teen Productions is brought to you by Judge Michael Latham and the Legacy Teen Centers where we have the loft and the lodge, the lodge in Round Valley, the loft here in St. John's. Uh, here at the loft, we have some of our young students here from St. John's High School running the cameras. And we'll talk about them here in a little bit, introduce them, and let them know how much we appreciate the work that they do. But anyway, proactive engagement, proactive activities, or pro-social activities, is what the Loft Lodge Legacy Teen Centers are about that Judge Michael Latham has brought to Apache County in hopes that we can help teach our, our young youth some new interactive skills and keep them involved. And having a part of it with Victor is, has, has been a great success where we have great relationships with these young men. So, Blue Ridge back to kick. St. John's to receive. Mr. Copeland says, bring me the ball. And Bridge drives it to about the 10 yard line where it's caught by JT Richardson. He's up to the 30, to the, about the 32 yard line. Good, good return by JT. So now we have the second series for St. John's. So let's introduce you to some of these young players that we have. St. John's up. Hand off to JT Richardson. He's fighting. Oh, he gets five, six yards on the carry. So we'll bring up our quarterback tonight. Asher Raven has his nickname of Smasher. So I'd like to see him use his nickname a little bit. Oh, 
And who's that number? That's number 12, Clance. Will Bank slips. So it brings up third and one and a half, two yards to go. Going on the Steeler theme here with Clance Woolbank, number 12, the greatest quarterback ever to play the game, Terry Bradshaw. Y'all thought I was going to say Tom Brady, but it's not. And the handoff, and met at the 40-yard line and dropped number 44, Preston Lindsay. So now we have fourth and about a yard, yard and a half still. Less than two, fourth and... Franco Harris for Blue Ridge is able to get good penetration in the line and stop. St. John's back to punt. Number one, Jordan Winters, a 6'2 senior. Good snap. Kind of rugby style kick. Gets a good high, high kick. Let's the ball drop inside the 20 or about the 17 yard line. So with three minutes, 16 seconds to go in the first quarter. Blue Ridge, six, St. John's, zero. So to name a few of these players, we have going through the roster for Blue Ridge. Number one, a junior, David Simmons, 5'9". Number two, Jace Barton, junior running back. Number three, Emmanuel Rosales, sophomore, who's a fullback. Number three, Alfred Lever, quarterback, sophomore. And Harris gets to drive up the middle, uh, close to a first down. Number five, Elam Antonelli. Wide receiver, running back, he's a senior. Seven is Eric Hernandez, running back. Eight, Trenyan Tricky, freshman. Wide receiver, defensive back. And we have number 69 for Blue Ridge, Aiden Olgum, a junior guard being sent off. And number... 56, Donovan Burnett. So first down, three minutes to go. And one of the new emphasis this year is, is uniforms and illegal and improperly equipped uniforms. Illegal uniform will get the head coach a 15-yard penalty. If he's just improperly equipped, it, it's a quick trip to the sideline to fix himself. So my guess is that that's the, that's the situation. He had to go over and make himself properly equipped and then come out. So one well, of the point of emphasis this year for the officials. So Blue Ridge back, shotgun. And off to Harris. Gets back up close to the line again. And Steve Copeland's waving his hands like he's got a ton of flies. Trying to look a little closer and says, Steve, or Chuck, won't you come over here? You have better eyesight. He takes a look at it. Chuck takes a look at it. Says, let's bring the chains out here because I can't see that far. So now we're, we get to see the most exciting thing officials do in the sport of football right here. This is the most exciting thing. Hold it down. It looks like by three quarters of the length of the football, Blue Ridge gets the first down. That's almost, Victor. I know you, you, you can't talk right now, but that's almost as exciting as a triple in baseball. Almost as exciting. Almost. Lots of 
Rusty Oaks is like, no, Paul, that's not even close. It's okay, Rusty. We still love you. Shotgun formation. Snap. Under pressure. Gets a bubble screen out. Breaking over the middle to the 50, the 45, into about the 40. One yard line of St. John's. Almost a 20 yard gain by Mr. Simmons. And David Simmons for Blue Ridge. Once he gets in the open field, he has a lot of speed. That family, him and his brothers, all have had great speed. So let's see if we can find out about a little bit about Mr. Simmons. Shotgun. Rolls to the right. Throw it just outside the outstretched hands of number five. We have a, a Landon Cavey who is playing for Blue Ridge. Mr. Cavey, if you're listening, great job on the chains last night. Let's see. No. Oh, here we go. Number one, David Simmons. Looks like he drew it out for us, did a great job. Franco Harris up the middle, about a six, seven yard gain on that. Mr. David Simmons' nickname is Snacks. Favorite color is blue, and his favorite class is Weights. His favorite teacher is Mr. Garrison, and he loves Hacksaw Ridge as his favorite movie. Loves hip hop music. Like his dad, he's a Dodger fan. Favorite player is Tom Brady. He says, is the GOAT. There's probably not a lot of argument there, Mr. Simmons. His future plans are to go to college. What is unique about him, he's the first player, I guess, was in Blue Ridge with number one since Morrill. Hand off to Harris. He's got some running room, and he cuts into the 15. Looks like the ball comes loose. And a lot of waving, and Mr. Scott Baker says the ball goes to St. John's. So the bend but don't break defense for St. John's comes through on that and is able to force a fumble. And St. John's has the ball first and 10 from about the 13-yard line. And as we hear the band trying to get the crowd excited a little bit, 18 seconds left in the first quarter. Again, just a reminder, this is a Legacy Teen Production broadcast presented to and brought to you by Judge Michael Latham, Superior Court Judge. Raven in the up under center. Pitch. Misses Clance, and Clance is able to land on it at the one-yard line. So 12-yard loss. That should put us into the end of the first quarter.
And we're back. Second and 20. To 23 yards. Looks like they have to get to the 23 yard line. So about 22 yards to go for a first down. St. John's. Looks like they switched quarterbacks to Clance. Steps back. Gets a throw to Asher. And it gets up to about the 14 yard line. So 13 yards. 13 yard gain. Gets him outside of the end zone a little bit. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Clance back at shotgun. Double doubles. Drops, looking left. Gets throw to number four, who's coming across the middle, gets hit right away. About a five yard gain, fourth and five. Looks like Seth Slaughter, number 21 for Blue Ridge, gets, makes the tackle as he delivers a big hit at the 20 yard line, fourth and five. Fourth and four, fourth and three. St. John's <laughs> kick formation. Seven runs off. Jordan Winters back. And Mr. Scott Baker says, look how high I can throw this flag. We have a delay of game on St. John's. So that drops it back five yards, which gives a little bit more room for winners to put the ball closer to the goal line. Simmons back to receive, rugby style kick. Nice high kick. Simmons signals fair catch and gets it at the 40 yard line. So Blue Ridge football, first and 10 from the St. John's 40 yard line. Throws a pass deep to number 41. Makes an excellent catch. Number 41, Jake Esparza. Looks like over Cy Lindsay. Luke Berlin, freshman quarterback. Freshman quarterback, Luke Berlin for Blue Ridge. Showed a, showed a good arm and Plenty of accuracy on that pass as he gets just over the St. John's defender. Hand off to number 21. He goes up the middle and he's dragging a pile of Redskin defenders. He gets it down to about the three yard line. 21 is Seth Slaughter. So we have timeout. Timeout, St. John's. They're trying to get together and get a little bit of a breather for the Redskins and set the defense and try to stop Blue Ridge from adding to the score right now with 9.54 to go in the second period. 6 nothing Blue Ridge.
And here we go. Second and one from about the three yard line as St. John's defense is going to try to get a hold here. And Blurge is moving the ball real well right now. Yeah. Hand off to number 21, Slaughter, and he cuts back and half of a tackle and is able to slip into the end zone for a touchdown. No flags on the play. So that brings us to 12 nothing Blue Ridge. They bring their little kicker in. Reed Granillo. Granillo. If I'm saying that wrong, please let us know. Here in a minute, I'll pull up. YouTube to see what kind of comments we have. Go ahead and comment. We'll try to mention and have a discussion there. But let's keep it clean. And the kick, snap, kick. And that one looks like it is good. 13 0 Blue Ridge with 9.49 to go in the second period. Blue Ridge is off to a great start here. All right, Victor got me a an iPad up. It, yeah. And we have our second best super fan, Pacer Wiltbank, on our live chat with us. Hopefully the sound's better, Pacer. Let us know. You got my, uh, you can contact me. You know that, my son. So let us know as Blue Ridge is set up, ready to kick. St. John's ready to receive. Mr. Copeland says, bring me the ball. See how deep you can kick it here. And a kick, a little bit of line drive, knuckle ball. Hits about the 15, but gets a great bounce and breaks the plane of the goal line, which equals a touchback and brings the ball back to the 20-yard line. St. John's has the ball first and 10 from the 20-yard line. St. John's back in the huddle. Got the band playing a little bit here. Great high school environment. There, I don't think there's any better game, any better place to be than a high school football field on a Friday night. One of the best places to be. Clance back. Take a stab, shotgun formation. Run. Quick throw to number seven. He's got one man to beat. Looks like there might have been a Hey, I'm going to go ahead and shake your face mask here a little bit, see if I can slow you down. Mr. Copeland says, ah, we're going to give him a fiver. He didn't really jerk it that hard, didn't twist it that hard. So it looks like we're going to have a five-yard face mask against Blue Ridge, bringing it to a first and five. And, well, they're five yards was from the spot of the foul end of the run, which was a yard behind the line of scrimmage, making it sec second and six, maybe. And we have one of our super employees here with us, Mr. Josh Curtis. Josh should just come over here to St. John's and join me and help me out, give us some great insight. He's a helps coach over in Round Valley. He's a great job, a great guy. And so run to the left, gets up to the 28-yard line, two yards to go. Third and two. So 
So St. John's got a little bit of a drive going at this point, third and two. With Clance, Will, Will Bank in the backfield. They're opening the field up a little bit more. Class fake pitch. He's able to cut up the middle. And he gets across the 40-yard line. Great gain. Five, ten, about 12, 13-yard gain. First down. It's 42-yard line. Great cutback by Clance. Oh, and that does come back. There's flag on the field. So this is going to bring us back a little bit. Takes away a great run from, from Clance. And Mr. Copeland says that is a hold. We're going to go 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Replay the down. So it should be second and 15 here. Snap, Clance. Clance holds on to it, gets about eight yards. Gets some positive movement. Still a little bit behind the sticks. Third and seven to go, but good recovery from Clance on that play to get some of that yardage back. Number 44, Preston Lindsay bringing a great play into the hometown Redskins. I tell you, Blue Ridge is showing some tough defense tonight. They're able to swarm the ball, get some good penetration in on the defensive line, and they're making the plays that they need to make. So, oh, handoff to the up back. Ball slips out and is recovered. So it ended up being about a yard gain. Michael Bushman, Johnny on the spot, able to quickly get on that ball. So now we have about fourth and five to go. A promising start to a drive. Kind of fizzles out there because of the holding penalty. Michael Bushman, his nickname is Bush. His favorite teacher. Coach Morgan, probably from last year since he's no longer with us. Hopefully the Morgans are watching and paying attention and, and seeing this great program that he's built. We have a fake punt. A lot of room to run, a lot of room to run, and he gets back up to about the 47, 48-yard line. And Steve Copeland says, hey, I don't know if it's the 47 or the 48. I'm going to split the difference and give it to him at the 47 and a half. Chance Sneed, our umpire who lives down in Benson area and comes up to officiate White Mountain football on Friday nights. I'd like to thank our, our crew here, the referee, Mr. Chuck Copeland, headlinesman Steve Copeland, the line judge, Adrian Perkins, umpire, Chance Sneed, and our back judge, who's way back in the back, trying not to get beat to the end zone, is Mr. Scott Baker. Mr. Baker's like, I'm waving my hand. You better snap that ball. Gets the ball snapped. They'll, comes back a little bit, and Clance is able to gain about five yards on the play. About four yards, second and six. No one's open. Clance pulls it down and makes a run for it. So six minutes, ten seconds to go. St. John's is at the Blue Ridge 48-yard line, down 13 to nothing. You can see Clance is running around with a little bit of confidence back there. Understanding the offense, having been a quarterback for the last few years. Blue Ridge is dropped back, respecting his arm a little bit. Clance is a great baseball player. Tough pitcher. Good little competitor. And going back to it, Pacer Whitbank, I said, is our number two. His grandma is our number one. We love her. She's our number one fan. I got messages from her this week, making sure that we were going to broadcast this game. Scott Baker says, guys, you got to hurry up. That's a, another delay of game penalty. These penalties, they add up. Now you go from second and six to second and 11. Making the drive a little bit tougher. Snap to Clance. Pulls it. Hold. Dave gets around the corner and gets up to maybe the 46-yard line before he's taken out of bounds. 
get some of that, most of that yardage back, and then some. So now we're looking at third down, four. As the clock winds, five minutes to go in this half. Good. Legacy Team Production is brought to you by Judge Michael Latham, Superior Court Judge for the state of Arizona in Apache County. Created the Legacy Team Centers. Pitch from Clance to number four, gets around. Clance takes a big hit, though. And number four, JT Richardson is able to get the edge and get up inside the 35-yard line, about the 34-yard line. So drive that at one point looked like it had fizzled out thanks to a great fake punt. Great fake punt co called by Coach Richardson and staff. Catches Blue Ridge napping a little bit, thinking that they're just going to go ahead and kick it. And is able to gain some positive yardage, gets, keeps the drive going. St. John says, hey, we've got a great drive going here. Let's think about this for a minute. Four minutes, 25 seconds left in the second period. We have timeout St. John's. Yeah, my, my favorite fan in all the world, Miss Vanita Bishop's right, chiming in. We think the world of her. Victor and I are trying to figure out a way to get out to California and, and do a broadcast out there of the local school for them. It's 928-524. 928-524. That's how you call Holbrook. And when I was a little kid growing up, it was 928-524-3391. That was my home phone number. Who can remember that? In Woodruff. Anyone been to Woodruff? And St. John's back. First and 10. 34-yard line. Snap to Clance. JT Richardson is able to slip through a couple of tackles. Gets inside the 25, down to about the 24-yard line. Moves the chains. First down. If I had my, my boy Kale up here, I'd try to get him to do the Cardinal first down mimic as he is an avid Cardinal fan. So first and 10, Redskins. 24-yard line, four minutes and change, four minutes to go in the first half. They're down 13-0. Blue Ridge has done a great job tonight with kind of freshman quarterback. And five goes in motion. Pitch to five, trying to get him around the corner. But number one, Blue Ridge sn snuffed that out. If you could see at the beginning of the play, he was coming in. So that number five, Cy Lindsey, and number one, David Simmons. You could tell that they knew what was coming. That they saw it coming, and he was able to get there. And St. John's loses six yards. So a great defensive call there by, by Jeremy Hathcock and his staff. Second and 16. Clance and shotgun goes to, to the right, cuts it up the middle, slips the tackle, and number 18 is able to bring him down by a shoestring as he gets back to about the 21-yard line. That tackle, tackle Reed Granillo, also the kicker. Blue Ridge. Blue Ridge says, hey, let's talk about this, guys. It's third down. It's a big third down for Blue Ridge, but they want to turn St. John's at this away and at this point inside the 25 you'd think that for St. John's this would be two down territory so and there's there's giveaways here tonight there's prizes it's a great night to be here in St. John's Arizona nice crowd over there from Blue Ridge coming to support their team there's raffles going on over here. People are winning. Left and right. People are winning. 249 left in the second period. <laughs> A 
as St. John's comes out. As St. John's comes out of the right, huddle. Third and, third and five to go. I have Victor over here, a show low faithful, watching the show low pacing game. It looks like it's 19 to 7, Victor. Is that correct? And then Sholo just had a big run. Big Brian Lang comes in, marking this spot, killing it. So you know it's 20 yards or more when Brian comes involved in a play. And Clance fakes the pitch, cuts it up inside, inside the 15-yard line. It looks like it's going to be short. So we're going to have about fourth and a yard. Fourth and a yard with two and a half minutes to go. So again, after the fake punt earlier in this drive, two and a half minutes to go. St. John's down 13 nothing. I don't even think Coach Richardson is hesitating at this point. I think he's like, we have a little bit of a drive going. We've got some momentum here. Clance has been a master behind center with the ball. And we have a timeout. Blue Ridge Hathcock says, we need to get a stop right here. So he's going to take a timeout, bring his defense over, set up after he sees what St. John's lined up in. Thinks he has an idea of of what this is. And the truth be told, Jeremy Hathcock is a very intelligent coach and does a great job of coaching. So I'm sure he has a pretty good idea of what's what's about to happen. And we'll see what kind of thing comes out of here, out of this chess match here. So we can Hopefully you can hear the high school band. That's it's one of the things I love about high school football. You get the band down here. You get the cheerleaders on the track, the hometown stuff going on. It's just a great, great environment. We love it. And here at Legacy Team Productions, we're just happy and excited that we get to bring this to you. And I know everyone's wondering because he is the best, but Mr. Michael Whiting is still with us. He is still going to help us out this year, different games, but he is just not available tonight. We do miss him. Especially me and my vocal cords. Clance under center. Gives it to the first guy back. And he breaks it. And he's able to score. So he gets a stop. Blue Ridge stops him. Short of the line to gain. He keeps his legs churning. And he keeps going. What is that? Number 63. Slash 99, Mark Cox, super sophomore. And the reason why uh, Mark and his family are super excited, he wears number 99 on defense because he can't, but he's a guard or a tackle on offense, and he cannot wear 99 and be on the offensive line. There has to be five numbers between the numbers 70 and 79. St. John's had 12 men in the huddle, and so Mr. Copeland says that is an illegal substitution. And we're going to bring it back five yards. Now the rule on that is that once they are told that they're subbed out, they have three seconds to leave. So we don't have the 12 in a huddle in high school football, but we do have where they have to leave immediately. And in that situation, he did not leave immediately. And so it cost him. C.J. Winters, number 21, with a big boot. Big boot. He hits that from the 15-yard line, 25 yards in the air. Cuts the lead 13-7. to seven. And you can see the excitement. It's palpable here in St. John's. The kids are excited about it. Levi Howard goes out there to talk to his good friend, Mr. Copeland, and says, hey, what was that penalty about? Mr. Copeland says, hey, 12 guys out here for too long. It's an illegal substitution. We only want 11 play in this game. And Levi Howard says, yeah, that's probably right. So you can see the excitement as St. John's has struggled tonight. Blue Ridge has been playing great defense. St. John's puts together a great drive. It results in seven points with a, about a six-yard tough run by Mark Cox where he was actually stopped shy, but he's able to keep his feet moving, driving, and his good friends on the offensive line are saying, we're going to get you there, buddy. And they got him into the end zone, cutting it to 13-7 to with two minutes to go.
So St. John's back and they have big Kevin Hernandez lining up. And St. John's kicks big boot in it. That ball hits just shy of number 31. 21, Seth Slaughter. He's able to break it. He gets to the side. Couple of guys to be. They might have him hemmed in. He tries to run over the kicker, and he is stopped at about the 37-yard line. Great run back by Blue Ridge. And one thing historically that you've known about Blue Ridge football is that they've always had great return. Usually it's the punt returns because defensively they were, they've always held people. And they, they usually they are able to seal a sideline and able to get to get around it just like they did there, setting up with minute 56 to go, a short field, 37 yards to go for for Blue Ridge. They're back in business after giving up a touchdown. Slaughter with a great return. So Blue Ridge comes out, trips to the left. Freshman back for shotgun. And hands it to Hands it to my man Harris. He gets stopped. JT Richardson and Jay Wall get the stop. Jay Wall is one of our, I believe he's one of the seniors on this team. Number 70, Jay Wall. Six foot one, 220 pound senior. Great young man. Pacer, 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 pacer. I love you, man. But we know Vanita is the, the president of that club. You might be the secretary, my friend. The Pacer is one of my, my favorite people in the world, though. Him and my wife, they share a birthday together. So you can't, get, you can't have a better birth date than that. Comes from a great family. Low snap. And this, number 10, Luke Berlin, the freshman quarterback for Blue Ridge, says, I'm just going to jump on it so that we don't give up this possession, and Blue Ridge takes their final timeout of the half. So it, the 34-yard line was second and maybe which Wells to go on this one. Not quite Sanders. Minute left, minute one, left 13 to seven. As we go in. Timeout, Mr. Copeland comes over here and gives a bunch of hand signals and says, hey, I need something on the clock. Push it back up. I have small hands. That works for me. Pretty soon he'll start yelling. They're trying to put 111 back on the clock as the clock ran after they did that. So 111 back on the clock. And he wants to run a couple more seconds off. And 109 is what we wanted on the clock. 109 left in the half. The brain trust up here in the press box to get that eight seconds added back to the clock was impressive. Blue Ridge double doubles. 10 drops back under pressure. Throws it up and just out the hands of the receiver at the goal line. Under pressure. Under pressure. <clears throat> Puts that ball in the money. Great throw by number 10, Luke Berlin. As number 44, Preston Lindsay was bearing down upon him, putting him under duress. Great throw. Shotgun formation drops back. Oh, does a little slip screen there. Probably should have been a block the back on that one as number 68. 
Number 66, maybe 69. Down for for Blue Ridge. Looks like he's grasping his knee. Hopefully that. Hopefully he's not hurt. We're trying to figure out what number it is up here. Looks like 68. Let's see. So unfortunately we have an injured player down, which we don't like to see. We love to see these kids compete, but we don't want to see them get hurt. And we'll take this moment, we'll just throw a little commercial up here for us and kind of let you see what we're about here at Legacy Teen Productions and the Legacy Teen Centers. Right, our Blue Ridge player is helped off the field, but kind of walks off with a little bit of help. He's moving gingerly over by the bench. Hopefully it's nothing serious and he comes okay. So fourth and 12, and we have false start on Blue Ridge. So that's going to back him up five more yards with 35 seconds left in the first half. So we're back to where we were previously, almost. Fourth down, which wells to go? Maybe this is just Blue Hills. Harrison backfield, a little bit of a slow snap. Pressure by St. John's, throws deep. Back shoulders him and just threw his hands. So with 30, 20 seconds left, St. John's takes over the ball. First and 10. Right about the 32-yard line. So St. John's come running in. Big 69, Aiden Olgum comes running in, a big junior. Double, double, single back, shotgun formation. Clance dropping back. Just, just beyond the hands of 32, Asher Rabin. A little bit higher, a little bit closer. I think Asher gets that. Might run for a long ways, but it rained heavily here earlier today, so the grass is, I'm sure, very wet, and the ball's a little bit slippery. So good look, good read. We have big Jonathan Green watching from Mays, Kansas. And we have the Clans Wiltbank Fan Club on uh, our uh, YouTube chat. So, Clance back, the snap. He's rolling to his right, got a little bit of room. One guy, if he can sneak past him, and he gets to the 40 yard line. Stays in bounds. The clock will run seven. St. John's calls a timeout with seven seconds left in the second period. I'm going to take a quick timeout too because apparently I have to help this little Raven girl up here run the PA system.
I know you guys are worried out there, but tech support was able to come through. It was turned up the PA system so that Mr. Raven could be hear heard by the Blue Ridge faithful. So third and three, seven seconds to go. Double doubles. Single back. A little screen to, to JT. Let's see what this can go. Can he get around the corner? Gets around the corner. Slips past one. Keeps going and gets dropped. Brought down at the 35-yard line. And that will bring the first half of football to a close. So the first half of the John Richardson era of St. John's football has Blue Ridge up 13-7. to seven. As they get ready to go into the locker room to make second half adjustments and we will go ahead and turn this over and mute me so you can have some fun and show some replays we'll see you in a minute
Okay, and welcome back to St. John's High School field. St. John's won the toss at the beginning of the game, and they elected to defer, so they will be receiving. Blue Ridge will be kicking with their back to the clock. So as they line up and prepare to go, I'd like to point out that Pacer, you've been replaced as the number two fan to the number three fan. It's a family conflict. I can't help you out on that one, buddy. All right, back to kick for Blue Ridge. We've got Reed Brazil on the kick. That deep, we got 32 after yeah. Reed. And we see that Lisa Painter, Lisa Painter is on our chat with us. Lisa Painter's one of my heroes. She's awesome. Uh, short kick, 56, picks it up. Big 56 says, I got a chance to run this, baby. You know what, Victor, you give. You give a lineman an opportunity to run the ball, and th they just take advantage of it. They are going to have the best time of their life. That kid, he's going to write a letter to somebody tonight talking about how he ran that ball back 40 yards. It was eight, but he's like, dude, that was a 40-yard gain. I, I had the swivel hips going. I was, you should have seen me juking all those people out. It was a lucky shoestring catch that got me. Anyway, St. John starting the half. Great field position on their 48-yard line. Set down 13-7. to seven. And one score update that we know of, uh, Shillow is down at half, 19-15 to 15, to Payson. Pacer, quick pitch out, gets it outside. JT gets in, bends backwards, and gets to the 46-yard line. Got a six-yard gain on that one. Tough run. And watching the replays of the first half, this has been a well-played, hard-fought football game with some great hits going on out there. Great sportsmanship by both these programs, class programs, class coaches, classy kids. So 46-yard line, second and four. Hand off up the middle to JT. Hard running gets it pretty close to the first down, but probably just a little bit shy. We have Randall Brower watching us from Litchfield Park, Arizona. Randall, it's a short drive up. You can just come up on weekends, come hang out. Cooler weather. See the... Hometown team playing. Good to have you up here. Third and one. Plants under center. Keeps it. Keeps pushing, keeps pushing. Hey, let's see where they spotted him. Do they give it to him or not? That's going to be a close one. We might have one of those exciting plays where the white hat brings the chains across the field to see what happens. Nope. Mr. Copeland says, I got this one. First and 10 for St. John's at the 42-yard line of Blue Ridge. First down. St. John scores late in the second quarter, late in the first half, to bring it 13-7. to seven. And now they are continuing that with the first first down of the drive of the second half. Plants the shotgun. Looks left. Throws it. And a little bit short. A little short to Asher Rabin. So it brings us to second down. Lisa Painter, though, here in St. John's, runs the runs a Facebook page here that gives a lot of great information about St. John's. And it's impressive how well she does and she how she keeps it clean, drama-free. She, that's what I love about her. She loves drama free. Does a great job with that. So we thank you, Lisa, for everything you do to help out St. John's. Plants under pressure. They able to get away from one and then gets up to just shy of the 40 yard line. Gain about a yard and a half. Escapes a little bit of pressure. Third and eight and a half, third and nine. Third and a short nine or a long eight, however you want to go with it. 
Again, this Legacy Team production is a Judge Michael Latham brainchild to go with his Legacy Teen Centers. He's able to bring high school sports, which came in really handy, Victor, when uh, the pandemic shut everything down. We were able to bring games to, to St. John's. And we have just before the snap, just before the snap, Blue Ridge calls timeout. So with 9.02 left in the third quarter, Blue Ridge calls timeout, and we will take a quick break. Okay, we're back. I have Victor on the microphone now. He says, I'm going to give your voice a little bit of a break, Paul. I know you like to talk. <laughs> Mark Cox in the backfield, takes the ball, and he gets about five yards, four or five yards. Hey, Mike, Co Mark, Mike, Mark Cox is, is exciting to watch him. Uh, Run the ball. It's so much better now when you hit the right button, Victor. Absolutely. That's so much doing, better. <laughs> it's good to, good to have you here. High snap, but Clance brings it down. Carried it like a loaf of bread. Gets just past the 35 to about the 34-yard line on fourth down. Stops short of the line to gain. So it'll be turnover on downs. Blue Ridge will take over the ball. Great defensive stand by the Yellow Jackets there. It's able to stop a, a shifty Clance Wiltbank. So, Victor, it's good to have you here with me. Give me a little bit of a break. I'm what always you, glad to be here, Paul. It, it's so fun to be here. Absolutely. This is, like, probably the funnest thing that we do. I agree with you. And we do a lot of fun things. You go on hikes during the summer with these kids. Oh, man, that's pool parties. a blast. What, el what else do you guys do down there at the loft? Oh, we do cooking lessons with the kids on a weekly basis, art projects. Um, Cassie does a lot with the kids there at the center. I'm more of the outdoorsman. And we have drive up the middle. Gets about a three, four-yard gain there. Maybe number 21. My goal this year is to try to teach these kids how to do this live stream all by themselves, and I just kind of sit back and watch. So we'll see if I can do that this year. Yeah, it, it would be great to have this completely 100% student run, and at some point we hope we hope to get there. Um, I know our our main man, Caden Castleberry. He, last year he did a little bit of a switching in a basketball game, which let's be honest, basketball's tough. Oh, tough. it is. So we have a pass that's gonna get right near the line to gain. So maybe just a little bit shy. That's to my man, Troy Palomalo, <laughs> number 41, I Jake Esparza. So, soft or freshman quarterback for Blue Ridge. Throwing the ball around pretty well tonight. And St. John's able to stop the runner behind the line of scrimmage, but he just says, I'm going to find a different hole, and I'm going to go that way. And he's able to get about two yards to get a first down. So at the 45-yard line of Blue Ridge, first and ten. Yeah, Cassie has been a great addition down there at the loft to help you out. She has the cooking classes. She has girl nights. Uh, she's hosted a dance. Played a lot of music down there for that. Um, she's actually here taking pictures. Is she here taking pictures? Oh, almost picked off. 
Michael Bushman reads there. that. It's by her mom. She was taking oh. pictures earlier. We do have Cassie down there taking pictures. I need to talk to you about that, too. One, uh, Mr. Palmer was talking to me about one of the kids maybe borrowing one of our cameras. I said, yeah, just talk to Victor. Yeah, sure. You know, we'll get him a media pass, too, if they need to. The AIA has given us media passes, so we have all rights of the regular media that these kids can get into games for and take them around. And, you know, we've, we've broadcasted state games, done a lot of great things with them, and had, some, had a lot of fun. Covering the playoffs is probably the funnest thing. It's, it's a ton of fun. I remember a couple of years ago playing Santa Cruz and run up the middle, about a two-yard gain. And he, he looked like he hit a wall and he went backwards. But a couple of years ago, semifinal against Santa Cruz, Kale and I are down there taking pictures of the kids. That's probably one of my favorite memories of, of this is being down there with my son, Kale, who's now a freshman. And tonight he's playing the ball boy. Um, he had a rough day. Had to go down to the valley and and see some family, and came back up up today. So he he had he had a tough day. We have uh, St. John's kid down. Looks like a cramp when they had when they had that leg up like that and they're yeah. bending the, the the foot back. It's usually just a cramp, and hopefully that's all it is. Um, the Blue Ridge kid that got hurt earlier today, he ran off the field to the um, locker room. So we're hoping that he, that he's okay. And that's JT Richardson, probably just a cramp. So third and eight, JT out. That's that's not a that's not a big positive for St. John's. He's a, he's a big player for them. Tough, hard nosed kid, great running back, great defender. So definitely need him out there. Blue Ridge back in the shotgun, looking over at the coach. They assess the situation, see what they can get. Calling his snap. Quick pass to Troy Palomalo who gets licked right in the mouth as soon as he catches it. He but he as is, soon as he got the ball. He is there. right at the line. He was able to roll forward. So uh, first down. Great hit though. We have one of our great Blue Ridge fans joining us on YouTube. We'd like to welcome you. And if there's anything you can say about these young men out there playing, feel free. We'd love to talk about them. Great throw, great catch over the outstretched oh, arm. Oh, oh. Or did the ball come out? Yes. Oh, they did call it complete as he stepped out of bounds about the 19-yard line. Great pass to Simmons. About a 25-yard pickup. Great throw. Great throw by the freshman. Luke Berlin to the junior, David Simmons. And Blue Ridge is right there inside the 20-yard line. Handoff goes up the middle. They've gained three, four, five, six, seven yards. Great, great run by Blue Ridge on first and 10. You know, if you can if you can get five plus yards on first and ten, it really helps you out. Puts you in front of the sticks. If you can get five yards on any down, that helps you out. I had a had one coach tell me one time, you know, his goal really was to gain three yards every running play. He goes, because what's four times three? First down. There you go. Every it's, time. It's not twelve. Nope. It's first down. And that's all you need. Keep the b ball moving forward. Absolutely. So. And we have a timeout. Blue Ridge, that's their second timeout of the second half. 5.41 to go in the third period. 13-7, to seven. Blue Ridge. Looks like about second and four. So Redskins huddle around Coach Richardson and the defensive coordinator down there. What's really neat, Victor, this is, this is really cool that Coach, Coach Richardson has done here in St. John's to try to get the excitement back of the football program. A couple of weeks ago, we had Friday Night Lights where they started, and they had all the youth players here. That's awesome. Mighty Mites, juniors, all of them. Junior high team, middle school teams. And uh, you had two, two teams playing on each side of the field, and they had bouncy houses, food trucks, everything going on. Just, just a great time. And so one of the things, if, if you wear your football jersey to the game here in St. John's, you get in free. Are you so serious? all That's these kids awesome. get in free. And even better than that, Victor, at the beginning of the game when they're playing the Red Kingdom song, 
as they run through the big helmet that they raised up money for this year, if you wear your jersey, you get a run out of that tunnel with the, with team. the varsity team. <laughs> How so awesome is that for the kids? That, that is amazing. Great job, Coach Richardson. We love it. You're you know, building the excitement here. And number two gets the ball, and he cuts up the middle and is able to break and scores the touchdown. Number two, Jace Barton, junior running back, outside linebacker. It looks like he was able to see well as he walked through the, the line there, missing, missing players, getting a great cutback. So great job, Jace. That's 19-7. Blue Ridge takes the lead. Let's go talk about Mr. Franco Harris. I think he might, might, might be my favorite player out there tonight. Favorite color is blue. Favorite class is Navit Welding at NPC. And the kick is up. And looks like it's good. 20-7, to 5.36 to go. How lucky is Mr. Harris, So His dad's his favorite teacher. Favorite movie is Rush Hour. He likes all kinds of music. Hey, he's got this, a good taste in the movies. Look at this kid. This kid, it, he might as well be a Steelers fan, you know. Anyway, what do you think his favorite team is? It's not football. Oh, man. I don't even want to. You got to go old school, man. You got to go old school. So it's not it's not football? Yeah, it's not football. And you got to think late 1900s. I heard Ooh. someone say that, too. Late 1900s is like the 1990s. Ooh, I don't know. Maybe the Giants? The 1990 Bulls. Oh, okay. So guess who his favorite player is? Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. His future plans, he wants to work. What's unique about him, he has a puppy named Rodeo. Nice. You know what? When a guy's like, I have a puppy, you got to love that. You know, it shows you what kind of a kid he is. I just can't is. believe he likes the 90s bulls. Like, he, he would have to have <laughs> been really little or he had right. to watch a lot of footage, game footage. You know what I mean? Oh, I, That's I, awesome. I understand, 100%. How does he want to be remembered? How do you think – Mr. Franco Harris wants to be remembered. I'm going to think a good – the way he's already answering his question, I'm going to think a good team member. Right. Yeah? He wants to be remembered like Franco Harris. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. I want to be like Franco Harris. Awesome. Franco Harris, one of my favorite players. Big Pittsburgh Steelers fan. So, Bruage kicking it. A little knuckle, knuckle ball. Kind of gets behind number 32. They're able to pick it up about the five. Asher Raven is able to pick it up. He's breaking it. He's got two men to beat. Gets past. Oh, and he gets down to about the 40, 41 yard line. Where, see where they mark? About the 41 yard line. Great return. Here's one of the things. Look at these blocks, man. Here's one thing, Victor, that, that you see all the time in football, especially a bobbled kick. A bobbled kick a lot of times turns into a great return because it, that little extra time allows the blocks to develop. Absolutely. And so his blocks were able to develop a little bit, gets into the 42-yard line, and you know after giving up a score 20-7, to 7, St. John's is right back in business. They're in the Blue Ridge side of the field, first and 10. So Asher Rabin, who just gave us that big, big return, his nickname is Smasher. Favorite color is yellow. Loves history. You got to love a kid that loves history. Absolutely. That's my favorite subject. That's a fun subject. There's a lot to learn and a lot of cool things happen back in the history. And that ball overthrows Jordan Winter, who had a step, just slightly overthrown. His favorite teacher is Mr. Richens. Favorite movie. And that's a question maybe we have to ask Asher because he says his favorite movie is Top Gun. Really? Okay. The original? Or the remake. Which is yours? Which do you like? I haven't seen the remake yet. So, I, I, mine would have to be Top Gun. Um, his favorite music, honestly, anything but jazz. Okay. You, you know what? That, that kind of hurts me. One of my best friends, Freddie Pate, over in North Carolina, loves jazz music. Constantly, constantly showing it and putting it on Facebook. He has a great friend in, in Vegas that he's a, a DJ in Vegas that does jazz. So it kind of hurts me a little bit because he's a good friend of mine. Um, favorite team? I don't know if I want to guess. This <laughs> one. It's football at least? It, it's a football team. It's a football team. And they haven't been good for a long time. It's the Chicago Ooh, Bears. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> Love it. The Cowboys. So, so being a Bears fan, who do you think his favorite player is? Ooh, let's see. I don't know. Who is it? Sweetness. Oh, Walter Payton. Gotta go, go sweetness, Walter Payton. Absolutely, okay. That's and it looks like we have Scott Baker throwing up a flag saying, look how high I can throw it. As we have another delay of game on the Redskins. Dropping him back five more yards. So now we have third and 17, third and 18. Walter Payton, his future pan, plans to attend a university. What do you think is unique about Mr. Raven? I don't know. Let me know. I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Anyone got a guess? No guess. And we have a, about an eight-yard gain to, by Smasher. Smasher Asher Rabin. What's unique about Asher? He wants to play lacrosse. Oh, okay. All right. Hey, that's a tough sport, though. Dude. Have you seen those guys play? Yes. Oh, I am a lacrosse fan. They beat each other up. That, that, yeah. I have a good friend. I, went, I almost went to college with him, Chris White, out of Holbrook. He lives back in New Jersey. And his son played a lot of lacrosse back there. Okay. So, neat. Tough game. So, fourth and nine. Clancy and Shotgun. St. John's going for it. Swing. Out to four. Richardson's got a little bit of room. Oh, it looks like he's about two yards short. And now Blue Ridge is playing a little bend, don't break defense. Gives up a good return. And is able to four and out. St. John's, now we have first and 10. Blue Ridge, 325 to go in the third quarter. 27 ball game. Looks like Sholo just took the lead there. We have Sholo 21 to 19. That's a close game, though. Taking the lead. I tell you what, I had Sholo last last week. Sholo against Valley Christian, and you know, they came out. It was a tough game. It the the, the weather conditions. I mean, it didn't rain, but it had been raining like a day and a half. Oh, I bet that field was just the, soaked. The field was soaked, but it was handled really well. Um, long grass, though, but. The ball was slick, and, and Valley Christian ended up throwing six interceptions. And St. John's, or St. Shola made a lot of great plays on this. We have 21 getting the edge, and he's breaking a tackle, and he's driven out of bounds. By number 44, lets him go. Preston Lindsay, 5'11", 165-pound junior. Anyway, six touch, six six interceptions by Sholo. They come out with a um, – they, they come out with a – the victory, 42-28, I believe, 34-28 to 28 with about four minutes to go. Tough game, so, you know, sometimes it's hard to come back from a tough game, and Payson had beaten Blue Ridge 17-10. to 10. So sometimes you just don't know what, what Payson has, and so it looks like they're pretty tough. That's what's Which good about. Says you know, a lot about this Blue Ridge team, too, though. Friday night, anybody can win. It's yeah. Looks like we have how the team comes out. We have second and eight down there, and we have the George is like, let's go, Franco. Here's here's why this. I, I got to give a shout out to this Blue Ridge player, only because his dad's a friend of mine, one of our fellow officials. So you got to give love to the officials because that's a tough job for them to do. But Ethan Cavey, number sixty-eight. Oh, Mr. Baker says, I give one to St. John's. I'll give one to Blue Ridge. Here's a delay game for you. So five-yard loss on the penalty, second and 13. But anyway, Big Ethan Cave and number 68, Ethan KV. His nickname is KV or Big KV. There you go. So his favorite color is green. Favorite class, weights, Mr. Height. His favorite teacher. Favorite movie. This has got to be an old movie. A little bit of a rush. Number 21, throws number 21, gets back to the original line of scrimmage, plus about two yards. So number 21, Seth Slaughter. Seth Slaughter's been a big name tonight for Blue Ridge. So we got about third and eight. So 
Big KV. Favorite movie? The Simpsons. <laughs> All right, there we go. <laughs> the Simpson movie. He loves rap music. Favorite team is ASU. I don't know. We might have to talk to his dad about this. Roll out. Get hit. As he throws. Almost picked off by St. John. He should have had that. that yeah. That was in the hands even. That's a tough one. That one, you know, you're going to see that one in film study. and I don't know. You might have to drop and do some push-ups after that one. So fourth and eight. Looks like maybe the punting team's coming on for Blue Ridge. Liam is holding the ball like a goat. Let's go, Cody. Blue Ridge con chiming in a little bit there. So anyway, we, we might not need to talk to Big KV, though. His favorite player? Who is it? Connor McGregor. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So, so here's, here's Blue Ridge in their interesting formation as they go up on the line of scrimmage. And snap. And 32 is taking his time. And he kicks that out of bounds, a little bit short. So Ethan's and dead. Uh, about the 31-yard line. Derek Cavey, he actually uh, umpired some games for us in our solo all-star tournament we had, and he would not take a payment. You know, his dad's a great guy. He's a good dude. He's a really good guy. And he's coming along, and, and he's, he's turning into a, a really good official. So I, I like watching him work. I watched it, We watched him a lot in baseball. He was on a lot of our broadcasts here in St. John's, and just he, he works hard and he tries to learn so it's good appreciate it Mr. Cave he wants to go on a mission and then he wants to get a bachelor's degree in nursing oh nice what's unique about him it, it says a lot about him because I couldn't do it high snap can't hand it off can't fake it off but Pacer's able to get a little bit of a hole and a Pacer Clance, sorry, Pacer, I'm giving you credit for being an athlete. So Clance gets that up to the 45-yard line. Big, big gain there, minute 26 to go. So big KV, what's unique about him is he likes to hill bomb with his skateboard. I'm not sure what that is, but anything riding a skateboard, I cannot do. What is this? Hill bomb. So I don't I'm even sure, know what I'm that sure is either. My, my <laughs> guess, and maybe someone can correct me if I'm wrong here, my guess is he gets on his skateboard and go down the hills. My, my son speed. scoots, and I haven't even heard that trick. So I have no idea what that is. Maybe we have to call Dre. Plug him in here. Minute to go. Clance under center. Takes a step back and then drives forward, gets about a yard. And he wants to be remembered as that one dude. That one dude. Everyone knows. Hey, you know that one dude? Oh, yeah, I know Big KV. I got to give it up to St. John's um, being able to stop him here because they needed that bad. Yeah, St. John's definitely needed needed to get the turn over here. We got about 30 seconds left in the in the third period, 20 to seven. Again, Legacy Team Productions brought to us by Judge Michael Latham, one of his proactive, pro-social model activities that we like to bring to the youth here in St. John's. Pitch to J.T. Richardson. A little bit of slip there. He's able to maintain his footage and get near the line of scrimmage. He's about a yard shy. So in the start of the fourth period, we're going to have about a third and one. So as we flip the field here, we'll go ahead and take a break here and maybe show you a little video.
Okay, welcome back to St. John's. 20 to 7. Blue Ridge up. Third and one for the hometown Redskins. And if you're following along on our chat, you'll see that Sholo is starting to pull away from pace in a little bit. 29 to 19, I believe. Yes, sir. That's correct. So that makes you happy, Victor. Yes, it does. Clance gets the pitch out. Oh, that oh. pitch is a little bit hard. Picked up by Troy Palomalo, who's able to take it to the house. Jake Esparza, six foot senior, wide receiver, defensive back. Mr. Johnny on the spot is able to pick it up and get a big, probably about a 50 yard return as that ball was just mishandled, popped up into the air. Stretching the lead 26 to 7 with a point after try pending. I wonder how many Ram Valley fans we have watching. I bet we have some because they play St. John's next week. St. John's and they Ram have Valley. A bye this week. The big, the big rivalry. Tough, tough rivalry. So, yeah, that's a big game next week. It'll be played in the dome in Round Valley. I know Stacy Glasby, another official, but a Round Valley guy, is watching. He's had some trash talking comments towards me about it. Yeah. He asked me a little while ago, why aren't you white hatting tonight? Did I retire? <laughs> Stacy, no, I didn't retire, but I take Fridays that St. John's has a home game off to help promote our programs and try to support the kids and their youth that we have here. And it's a lot of fun. I get to hang out with my good friend, Victor, who I've known a long time. Long time. Very long time. So we get to hang out and do some fun things. The kick was good. It's 27 to 7. When did we meet? 2003? That's been quite a long time. Probably. We were both working in Navajo County together, and then we find our way to Apache County and St. John's. Except Victor still is a solo. Maybe Lisa Painter. Maybe Lisa Painter, the great Lisa Painter, can convince him and his family. You've got to convince the wife to not move me. here. Lisa, that's your goal. <laughs> Tell you, Lisa's awesome. She, her comments, she's got a great personality. Just awesome. And, and my wife's like, I want to be her best friend. I just want to be friends with her. Kickoff, high kick, about the 15-yard line. Picked up, Michael Bushman puts his head down and gets to the 35-yard line. I'm going to take a break real quick, turn you over to Victor. Mr. Muth from Round Valley says that he likes the replays, Victor. All Mr. Right. Muth was our umpire last night in the um, JV game. Did a great job. I'll try to keep those coming, Mr. Muth. Walk it off here. Looking for some room, finds a hole, runs it up the middle. There's Franco Harris with the tackle. St. John's can push for the first down here. They've got a short distance to go. Takes that. Takes him 
himself, keeps the ball. Oh, tosses it back. He's got a little bit of room. I don't know if that's enough for the first down there. Looks like it will be enough for the first down. They're moving the chains now. there. Ain't got much room here. Stop the pretty fast here. So we got a little action going on. Throwing some flags going off. Some offsetting penalties there on Sportsmanlike. Second and eight. Here at the 38. Stop now, guys. I just thought you guys wanted some ambiance music there. <laughs> All right, here we go. Plants back to take the snap there. Looks like we've got a false start on St. John's. We're going to move the ball back. Now we have third down and about 13. So we'll be about third and 13 to go. Takes it back, looking for somebody. Long pass. And it is good for a first down. Nice catch. Nice, another completion there. Jordan Winters, another completion there. Janet John's able to move the ball down. <laughs> 
Second and three from the 15. Take the snap back. And he can't handle it there. We've got 7.39 left in the game. St. John's, this is their first time in the red zone. We've got Mr. Hancock making his way back. I'm sure you guys missed him. All right, welcome back. So we uh, It's going to be close. St. John's player down on the ground. Not sure what the signals are down there. You know, Victor, early, early in the season, Kids are doing a lot of running, a lot of working out, but you, you know it, it's tough to get into game shape. It's tough to get into game shape, so you see a lot of cramping, especially in the first part of the season. Always, absolutely. So we have first and ten, just outside the ten yard line, about twelve yard line. First, and, so the first down can't be made. Well, he got back to the line of scrimmage. I'm, I'm, it's like I'm at Fenway Park here, Victor. There's like a beam right in my way at this spot. <laughs> That's your favorite spot here. It's like, welcome to Fenway Park. You can sit behind this beam and not see anything. <laughs> Second and 10. Shotgun. Jump. Oh, just out. Just past third and ten to go. And uh, to, to the great Bishop family, I have my main man, Kale, up here with me. Maybe I can get him on here in a little bit. Here, Kale, come take this headset. Are you ready? He, he's a big freshman this year. He's a super freshman. And he's, he's one of our main voices. Him and Mr. Whiting talk a lot here and do a lot on these games. They're co hosts. How are you doing, Kale? I'm doing good, thank you. Hey, uh, so you're a freshman. You're on the JV team. You had a big win last night, 19 to six against Blue Ridge in Blue Ridge. How'd that go for you? Well, it went great, and all of the points, even Blue Ridge's, were defense. Blue Ridge it's had one scoop and score, and we had three pick sixes. That's that's amazing, and oh, almost a pick off right there at the goal line. So we have fourth and t ten. From about the 12 yard line, six and a half to go, 27 to seven, Blue Ridge. So, Kale, I know, being your dad, obviously, that you love the game of football. It's your number one thing, it's everything to you, right? So, I don't know if you can hear him, but he's nodding his head. So, we don't have cameras on us, so you have to talk a little bit. He's, he's struggling a little bit right now um, with, with the asthma kicking in. So, I try not to make you talk too much, buddy. But how does it feel to play high school football? It feels great, and what makes it better is like all the varsity freshmen, all of them, are super nice. Yeah, we have a fault start out there. So everyone's really nice. You're getting along great as a team. That's, that's, that's important, having been on many teams in my life. So. Oh, look at that. My, my main man, Brian Lang, will love the fact that I have Cleveland Brown colors on a t-shirt that Ivana Ivana Richardson said if I bring it will you wear it so I have to wear it I'll put it on and I'll wear it for her because she's like I'll put it over the top because no one wants to see that I'll, I'll put it over the top because no one wants to see me do that so we have an interception by Simmons oh we get to be twinsies me and Ivana are twinsies and I don't know if you know this, Kale, but Ivana is one of the coolest freshmen out there. She's awesome. Yeah, like 
Oh, we have a, a Blue Ridge guy telling you, Kale. Um, give it to the, give it, give it to the hot guy in the red shirt. And I don't know how to say your first name. I don't want to butcher Navahi, Belvado, Navahi Belvado. Kale is saying great job last night, and they did, man. That JV game last night, hard fought. It was a, it was a fun JV game to sit there and watch. I I enjoyed it. Blue Ridge has great potential. Great kids coming up. St. John's as well too. So, Kale's going to take a break, and he's going to go back and watch his, his teammates and cheer them on as we have a delay of game on Blue Ridge from Mr. Baker. Thanks, Kale. Appreciate you. So, I have to take a break and, and keep up with my end of the promise and, and put on my new shirt that Miss Ivana gave me. Nice. No one wants to see it, though, because I'm telling you what, it, it's, it's, it's not going to cover my belly. Yeah, get right in, and that's perfect. I, I don't even think it's going to fit my shoulders. What do you think, Victor? Might be, it might be a little bit small. Are you serious? I want to see you in that. It might be a little bit small. We need, I need to get a camera for so you guys can see this shirt. You might, you might need to get a camera for this. I don't know if it's going to fit. Oh, I know it's not going to fit. I'm going to come out of here looking like the Hulk in a minute. A, a, a uh, Cleveland brown color. And Ivana loves the Cleveland browns. Because her favorite color is orange. And so when she picked teams, they, they were orange. Deep ball and a little P.I. So good, good throw. A little pass interference. So that'll add 15 and automatic first down with five minutes, 40 seconds to go in the in the game. Ugh. I don't think this shirt's going to fit, Victor. I don't think so either, man. If you guys could see Paul trapped oh. into the shirt, you guys would be cracking up right now. I'm seriously going to look like the Hulk here in a minute. The, the, the Garofalo Hulk, not, not the Edward Norton Hulk. Oh. And we have a, I think we have every flag possible out there on the field in that, on that play. So St. John's was all over that run to the right. We have three flags on the play it looks like. Maybe only two. Seems like more. No preliminary yet. Here we go with the preliminary. And we're going to have a hold on Blue Ridge, and it's going to be declined because they lost about eight yards on the play. So second down, 16. Throw over. Oh, wow, what a catch. Gets the, gets the yardage back, maybe... Maybe yard shy, third and 11. I had thought there was no way he was going to catch that. I didn't think that was possible either. What a great catch. Saves an interception. I, think, I thought that, get, that ball was going to be picked when it got tipped up like that. I agree. Easy, easy tip drill. Third and 11, third and 12, five minutes and change to go. 5.08. I'm going to take a quick break here and see if I can get this shirt on the top of me. That's going to be a task in itself. So. I don't know if I can get it over my big head. <laughs> Paul's trying with all his might. And I'm back, and I, I may not be able to breathe while this shirt is on. 
<laughs> I'm going to get a camera person, then we can see. Kale, Kale took a picture, but yeah, you're going to have to get a camera person up here. Good thing I kept my other shirt on. Blue Ridge kid gets behind. Great throw. Victor, Victor, Victor. We got to talk about this freshman sensation from Blue Ridge. Right. That Look at that pass. That was a beautiful throw. Kind of threw it off of his back foot, too. A little bit behind him. You know what? If he hits him on stride on that one, he that's might have six. been gone. That's yes, six. Absolutely. That's a great throw. I can't believe he's a freshman. So now have first 10 on St. John's 42. And we have, I think that's Mr. Simmons. Excited, wanting to get ahead of everybody on that one. So we got called for the false start. Mr. Simmons, though, has played one heck of a ball game. He's been all over the field, made some great plays. But this number 10, Luke Berlin, freshman quarterback. And we got the better half in the house. <laughs> now my, my wife is looking at me like, what shirt are you wearing? Ivana. Ivana Richardson. Okay. So, so now we're about to just inside the 45. Lost about three yards. Let me see if I can find Luke's paper real quick. These pay, and I appreciate the coaching staff for Blue Rays. They did a great job getting us this information. We got to learn more about this young man. Third down, five to go. Three minutes and twenty-nine seconds on the clock. So a nice gain, about third and five to go. A little bit of a low snap, gets up and throws it behind. Luke Berlin, I got it. Doesn't have a nickname, Victor. He might have one after tonight. I think so. The kid is money. Favorite color is green, that loves P.E. That should be his money. Yeah, it should be. He's, he's been money tonight. Favorite, co favorite teacher is Coach Hathcock. Favorite movie, Stand By Me. Nice. That, you know, there's a lot movie. of these guys who like an old school movies and stuff like that. Likes country music. Arizona Cardinal fan. Favorite player, David Simmons. I think he's a Cardinal. I think he's one of my favorite yeah. Cardinal players. Yeah. I think he's the big, a good defender, kind of a dual-all defender type. I think he's one of my favorite Cardinal players as well. He wants to go to college. He has horses. Nice. Super freshman has horses. Wouldn't surprise me if, like, he rode bulls or something like that too. Right. You know, as tough as he is. These guys that rodeo and, and, and have horses, man, they're tough as nails. They are. And that's, like, good old Clance on, on St. John's sideline. They're ranching family, farm family, run the feed store here in town, have horses. Great kid, tough kid. So, Mr. Berlin, he wants to be remembered as one of the best players from Blue Ridge. Ooh, there's a lot I, of players I, that I, came I, to there, too, so those are big shoes to fill. Uh, well, you know what? He, he's second game of his high school careers, and look what he's doing. He's got, you know what I mean? He's got a good start there. Yep, the potential's there. So he's he's done a great job of staying. In. He's been under pressure, stays in the pocket, been under pressure, taking some hits, and just keeps moving the ball. We have fourth down, about five to go, drops back, under pressure again, throws it up, and just outside the reach of Mr. Simmons. He, and he takes a big shot in the back by big 44, Preston Lindsey. He definitely hurried, made him hurry that throw. Absolutely got it out just a bit before he wanted to, to the speedy Simmons. So with three minutes to go, 
Blue Ridge. Do you have an update on the Sholo score? 36 to 19 Sholo. So they kind of, as soon as they started scoring, they, didn't, they haven't stopped now. Yeah, I, I tell you, again, I, I had that Sholo team last week, and, you know, Valley Christian came in ranked number one in the 3A division and lose by two touchdowns. I think Sholo oh. came out with something to prove. And and I tell you, they came out, jumped all over them, and held on for the win. And Sholo's fast. Sholo is super fast. Kish Bob, man, that kid had some speed. Yeah, absolutely. It was it was a fun game to do, a fun game to be be a part of. Tough game, very hard fought. So, you know, Blue Ridge and Sholo, that game is going to be a fun one this year. Not sure where it's played, but someone will probably update us. And uh, George says Franco rides bulls. Doesn't surprise me. That doesn't surprise me. Doesn't at all. surprise <laughs> me. Franco Harris. I tell you what, he, he's probably my favorite. I don't know. Troy Palomalo, number forty-one, might be my my. I don't know. Gotta love them both. Jake Esparza. And Redskin gets behind, and the ball wobbled out of there, and throws just short. Asher Raven showing a lot of speed on that play. So we have third and four or five yards to go. See Mr. Chance Sneed out there wiping his big bald head. Must be working hard and <laughs> getting a little bit warm down there on the on the field. I'd like to thank these um, these officials coming a long ways so that these young men can uh, play a game. High snap and Clance almost gets around. If he gets around that, what number is that? 12? Might be number 12 for. I think you're right. Let's see if I can find a number for that. Looking Drops for somebody. Back, goes pass. deep. Oh, we have. Yeah, there it is. There it is. A big hole. I thought so. Did you see that? Yeah. That was a great throw. And we're going to have pass interference coming from the back judge like that. And you could easily see the, the grasp there. Number 12, I think, was Carlo Harris. Is that who we th thought made that one tackle? Carlo Harris. That back St. John's up pretty far. So now we have a it'll be a 15-yard penalty, and they got rid of the automatic first down a couple of years ago. So it's 15 yards, and then you look at the sticks to see if the line to gain was made, and it looks like it was. We have a first and 10 from the St. John's 49-yard line. Minute and a half to go. Minute 35. And I'm sure St. John's would like to score here. Yeah. Let's uh let's talk about one of our unsung heroes tonight on the line. Uh, one of my favorite kids, too. This is a great young man. Uh, Jay Wall. Jay Wall, great Jay, kid. Uh, number 70, 6'1", 220. Favorite color is red. St. John's kid that likes red. That's a surprise. I was just going to say, the St. John's, they can't get enough of that red. Yeah. Favorite favorite class, Spanish. Favorite teacher. Who do you think that might be? Oh, man. I don't know. It's Mrs. Hancock. Oh, man. You know what? She's you my favorite teacher, people too. How many kids at the loft I get that love Mrs. Hancock? Yeah, she's awesome. Favorite movies, Remember the Titans, Loves Country. Favorite team, the Redskins. Favorite player. This is like one of the classiest players too. Screen pass to JT. He's got a little bit of room running. Weaving in and out, gets brought down from behind. Big gain, though. 20 plus yards, minute 15 left in the game. So, Jay Wall's favorite player, JJ Watt. There we go. Now that's I a player there, man. I tell you what, that kid, that JJ, has been a class act the whole time he's been involved. He wants to go on a mission out of high school, and then he wants to move to Texas. What part of Texas? He didn't say. He didn't say. He just moved to Texas. He has five siblings, and he just wants to be known as a good person. Hey, I, that's I tell what, you what I like. I tell that's you what, what I like. If you've ever met Jay Wall, he is a good person. He, he's 
Definitely, definitely on his way to be known for that. Another screen to JT. He's in and out. Keeps fighting, keeps fighting, keeps fighting, and gets in. You have 43 seconds left. JT fights his way to the end zone. You've got to give it up to these kids that are blocking down here. Oh. They laid down some nice blocks. Here, here's what I like, you know. This game, this game really was put away. Yes. Three minutes to go when they started this drive. This game really was put away. 27 to 7. 20. And you know what? These kids, there's no quit. On either side. Oh, they got hard. They're, they haven't stopped. Yeah, let's let's see if we can get a little bit on JT. JT's another really good kid. Yeah, I think I think he was my wife's aide or peer tutor last year. Mark Cox. There he goes. That Mark Cox. There. Mark Cox. You got to think about that. This young man has scored a touchdown tonight. Scored a two-point conversion. Brings the score 27 to 15 with 43 seconds left. I can't find. Who knows? Might have lost it. Hey, let's let's talk though, Victor. You'll be able to help me out here. All our right. our camera kids tonight. We have the man, Caden Castleberry, Castleberry, fourth year with us. He can do it all. Him and Kale, they, they can both do it all. Kale obviously is a freshman, but he's been following us too since the beginning. Both have done switching. Both have done camera work. Both, well, Caden hasn't done the microphone, but Kale has. Who else do we have down there? We have Brianna Sanchez. His sister's down there. She's been getting the close-up shots. Way to go, Brianna. Brianna Sanchez, thank you. And then I think we have Taylor. So we're double-checking to make sure we have the names. And we have Blue Ridge lining up, expecting. Uh, they're expecting a uh, onside kick here. Officials are saying, "Yeah, we expect that as well." So we'll have we'll have officials on both sides of both lines. All four out of the five will be on the lines up here, with the expectation of a onside kick. Let's see if they can get this kit here. And, and you gotta love it. 40, 43 seconds left. It's like, hey, we can still, we can still win this ball game. And obviously, obviously, it, it is an onside kick. And he kicks it a little bit high, over the top. And shocker, shocker, it goes to Simmons. Yep. You know, Mr. Simmons has been around for a lot of the big plays here. So 42 seconds left. 27 to 15. 12 point lead. Can't remember what the timeout situation is So we also have here. Mr. Joe McCarthy out here helping today. Joe McCarthy, big Joe. Joe. Joe was one of those kids that was on my. Uh, okay, St. John's. He was on I, with Kale. I coached his basketball Blue team. One of my favorite kids. Good guy. Look at. There's, there's big, big Castleberry. Bryson Slade was also down there. Got, did some camera work for us. All right. Thanks, Mr. Slade. And Blue Ridge is in victory formation. There's a rule here when you're up by more than eight points and you can run the clock out. Can't hit him. It's a, it's a sportsmanship rule. Bruce, we appreciate you, you tuning in. and Sorry you had to hear my voice this whole time. Kale's having a hard day um, his asthma was getting to him so he went home a little early he loves being here and being part of it he loves being a part of the team he was the ball boy for most of the game until the asthma kicked in so he's excited to be part of the program pacer number three love you bud so with 36 seconds again I'd like to thank Michael Latham Judge Michael Latham for Creating this program and allowing us to bring St. John's home games and even some of their state playoff games to YouTube so that we can uh, let people from all over watch our favorite teams play. And, you know, thank you to the Blue Ridge Faithful and the Blue Ridge Yellow Jackets class program. We wish them the best of luck. 
good group of kids over there. Great coaching staff. It's, it's fun to see this. And what a fun game this was, Victor. 27-15. And there's a flag. Again, the new the rule the last few years is, is you're up by more than eight. You can't hit them. And so it's a personal foul. Uh, Mr. Copeland likes to signal unsportsmanlike, but it's, it's a personal foul. So with 32 seconds left, if there's no more timeouts, this could run the clock out. It'll, it'll give them a first down. So one of the coaches for St. John is like, well, he's, he's, he's dancing back, he's dancing back. Well, he's not going anywhere, I can promise you. But if he goes anywhere, then it becomes an unsportsmanlike penalty, and we will kill it. So with the foul being on the defense, the game clock goes to 40. With 31 seconds left, this would be the ball game. So I'd like to thank everyone. Thank our young camera operators. Appreciate what they've done. Thanks, Blue Ridge, for coming. 27 to 15 ball game here. Blue Ridge moves to 1-1 one and one on the season. St. John's 0-1, and, and St. John's plays at Round Valley next Friday in night dome. in the Dome. We wish them the best of luck. Round Valley dropped their first game to Thatcher, so both teams will be looking for their first win next week, and it should be a lot of fun. So make sure you go over there and watch Round Valley and uh, give St. John's all the support that you can. Good luck to Blue Ridge. Thanks for joining us, and we appreciate you. Have a good evening.